Looks like we are. Caps tight. Looks like we are in the pick and ban here for our second game of the day. J Team versus Immortals. Twitch gonna be taken off the board immediately. Yeah, Twitch. I think pretty unequivocally the strongest marksman in this patch. At least my consideration for it to be 6.23. Even on 6.24 after the nerfs, I think Twitch is still the strongest, but by less of a large margin. So so far, it's them banning what you know again what I consider to be appropriate uh, at the very least. And as I look for the button, turn my headphones down slightly. Syndra banned away as well. Yeah, it's so interesting that Syndra kind of... I, I, I can speak to like things I know about sort of Ryan's design team because I work there, and uh, Syndra was initially considered for nerfs, and then the thought was that her play rate went down a whole lot, and her win rate went down a little bit as well, and people seem to not be playing so much Syndra on high-level rank, and so we're like, maybe she's going to fall off. We don't really have a lot of pro games to consider. Uh, turns out Syndra's still considered to be a, a premier champion, and... Um, you know, when everyone comes back from the break, we make a sip of that for more. But yeah, uh, Cassie P off the table as well. Also interesting to note, as far as win rates are concerned, because you know I love statistics, uh, and those are always Do fun. You? I I, I didn't stats. know this about you, Free. Yeah, stats are like my thing. Um, and sometimes I'm good at them, sometimes I'm not. But <clears throat> uh, the actual removal of Aegis of the Legion's Magic Resist Aura seem to generally elevate most mages about 1% win rate. Which, okay. is, which is actually a bit hard to parse because at first it was like, well, everyone's playing Talon and Zed and they're bad at these champions because the assassin reworks. This will happen at the same time. And so we had to like find ways like, well, in games where they're not against assassins mid, which mage has got the highest win rates and, you know, like who is getting more. Like Orianna was a big winner and we saw her in the previous game. Uh, LeBlanc actually ended up doing pretty well once people learned the champion. She ends up being a really premier mid laner. But yeah, there were a, a suite of mids who, who gained a lot of power, uh, largely from Aegis Geek. You know, being removed, but just in general, from uh, the landscape, ended up benefiting them because it wasn't all mages got better. Because mm -hmm. at a certain point, you just remove assassins; and they're all the same. Uh, so certain ones just happen to benefit from the landscape changing. Well, I, I, I mean, that's that's just perfect. You know, more damage for Syndra is exactly what we needed. Yeah, you know, <laughs> at least you have the crazy lock shield though. And, and one of the nice things yeah. is. I think people stopped buying Locket and then realized that Locket was good and started buying it again because it now had just more power in the action. But that Locket shield is actually insane. It's it's actually pretty ridiculous. And if you're a big AOE, even just any kind of a burst champion, right? Because the Locket shield decays over time. If the damage all comes in at once, you don't have any decay. You just have to block it right away. And yeah. champions like Orianna and Syndra tend to do damage all at once, and you can sometimes actually get really really good Locket value out of that item. Either way, though, we do have Orianna up, Syndra gone, Rise off the table. Really no surprise that these mid laners are all banned out. Fofo. Not going to get what he wants, and actually still high priority on the Ash is interesting. And yeah, I mean we saw this come. Yeah. We, we saw this come in the game one. Uh, Ruler played it, didn't have the best showing on the Ash, despite that being like one of the champions that he spammed all the time in the summer split. It was pretty much just Ash and Sivir bot from him. Yeah, uh, finally picked up the Jin near the end. Uh, but it's still going to be a really high priority pick, so we can see the Ash coming through here for Breaker. Yeah, and I gotta say. That one. So we'll see what Immortals want to run to try to counter that one. The, the Varus from Lex was doing a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. uh, got away with that really greedy build with the tier and the cull. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure if that's you know something that's in Cody Sun's wheelhouse. I don't know. It was weird that he picked the Varus because the Varus buffs came in in 624 and actually made him like a really strong AD carry. Now, to be fair, I guess like the Varus buffs were all around like the attack speed centric like hurricane builds, which is not what he went for. So yeah. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Jin actually still a big winner. Rex side great as well. Okay. I'm still surprised to see Jin picked up. You still have these great top laners like Poppy, Nautilus, and, and uh, Maokai, which, yes, you can trade back and forth somewhat, but like Zyra's up and Karma's up as two really high priority supports, which I think are two of the very, very strongest. Whereas Jin is not contested really in any meaningful way, and there's kind of letting uh, J Team pick whatever sort of S tiers they want left over. Yeah, it's also interesting because, at least as far as the LCK is concerned, whenever we see the Jin come in, because it's a high, really high priority pick this sure. last season, you see the Jin come in, the Ash is usually the answering pick because as soon as you see that curtain call come up, you just fire off the Enchanted Crystal Line Arrow, you know exactly where he's at, and you yeah. just follow the cone, uh, and then you interrupt it, you know, maybe he gets a shot or two off, yeah. but you interrupt it. Uh, so it's interesting to see that they want to bring that out. It's got to be a really big confident pick. Uh, for Cody Sun, for Immortals in general, so you have to think that this is probably something that they've been running in their cobs during sure. their scripts while, they, while they've while they been in Korea. Sure. Uh, but Victor and Maokai are going to be picked up uh, for yeah. J-Team, so going really <laughs> stable. This is like a little uh, reminiscent of huh. Samsung. Maybe are, they just are didn't... We yeah, are we sure Samsung got out of the booth? Or? Maybe they didn't prepare, and they're just like, uh, I mean, they pick whatever Samsung different. got. Yeah, right. I mean, and, and to be fair, that's... That doesn't have to be a bad idea. Again, I'm I'm purely speaking as as complete speculation. But if J Team weren't necessarily practicing a whole lot and they weren't taking the time off and they hadn't really 
gone back into the game as heavy team practice just yet, then, well, if we copy the team comp from one of the very best teams in the world, we know Samsung are great, then, hey, maybe that works out okay. Or they're just both correct and that these are the best champions in the game. And that can obviously be true as well. Well, that's just going to come down to the execution, perhaps, then, uh, because Samsung's was a little bit lackluster. We'll see if J-Team can have some better performances here with these champions. We'll find out how Fofo fares on this victor. But going back over to Immortals, so still going to be seeing some yep. similar matchups. The Poppy going into the Malkai in the top lane, the Oriana in mid for Pole Belter. Yeah. Uh, so big dive potential with the Poppy in the Rek'Sai mm -hmm. uh, for the you know the ball delivery system on that Shockwave. So Absolutely. Immortals do have a lot of tools set up for them. Yeah, but. this all looks very good. Honestly, we have exactly one new champion so far in the draft. Seven picks in, no big deal. Uh, <laughs> But, I mean, these, these are strong champions, and I think no one's really surprised. With Twitch off the table, Vayne is just sometimes a little bit risky. She's a weaker laner. We know mage supports are very common, and a champion like a Zyra or a Karma can definitely beat up um, onto a Vayne. And, in fact, with the support not showing, for example, Karma W is a hard reveal. It, you, can't, you can't invisibility through that. You stay, you stay shown. Spooky goes for the same thing. It's a hard reveal effect. So uh, in more coordinated games where people are going to pick the right counter picks, Vayne can be very, very scary to bring out. Of course, we're not seeing it here. The final picks come through. And actually, Graves Jungle plus a Zyra support. As we contrast to the previous games, of course, we knew Zyra was banned in the previous one. But Graves coming into the jungle is going to be pretty interesting. No Olaf here that we had seen from Samsung's jungler ambition. Graves is going to be a lot of damage, and it's relying on the Maokai to be the big tank. Yeah, it's going to be interesting seeing you know the Graves coming back into the jungle. It hasn't been really uh, that high of a priority pick for quite some time now. Uh, you know, definitely moving away from you know those, those big tanky junglers that we've been seeing, or even right. something like the Lee Sin uh, that has that hard CC like the Dragon's Rage. So you know, Graves is going to be lacking that. Uh, but if you can get rolling early on. Uh, could be pretty crushing as you jump in the face of that Jin, you can just absolutely blow him up with a collateral damage at an end of the line. Right, and, and the thing is about Graves in this composition, I don't think they need more damage. I feel like Zyra, Ash, and Victor are going to cover that just plenty. You could have gone for something tankier and you'd be able to survive your team fights just fine with three damage dealers. But the nice thing about picking up Graves is he's got really good gank assist in all his various lanes. It's very easy to gank for a Maokai, just drop the Q on top of his root, Ash, Zyra, plenty of crowd control as well. So. He's just able to bring out the damage here, Achi. And, you know, like, this is a good comp. Like, even though I say they don't need more damage, the lanes are still good for getting Graves in there for the damage up. I think that's going to work pretty well. Meanwhile, Ollie got to get himself his bard. And I got to talk to Immortals very briefly about, you know, hey, how do you feel about your new teammates? You know, how much we played together? And, and Dardock was the one to talk up. And he's like, yeah, you know, Bard was one of the champions he mentioned by name for his support here. So uh, something he should be very, very good at, something he should be very comfortable with. And in general, I think Bard, Jin, has so much potential threat here in the lane. You've got so much hard ground control you can lock up and, and layer together. The Dardox, uh, Rex, I can do the same thing. So I like the Immortals comp overall. It's a lot of utility, a lot of damage. Yep. Well, Ole on the Bard should be good. Saw him flash the Thresh, thought maybe that was something that he was going to bring uh -huh. out. It's a really like, kind of old pick for him. Uh, I've seen him work some magic on that one. But going back to the Bard, I mean, still a lot of pick potential. You have the the Jin to slow people with the Curtain Call. You've got that Tempered Fit coming up from the Bard for you know AoE control. So there's a lot of uh, good stuff going on for both of these squads across the board. J Team looks like they just need to get ahead early with that Graves in the jungle. So if you can't, you know, start doing damage, then they're just gonna fall to the wayside. But let's go ahead and load in to game two: Immortals versus J Team. Alright, welcome to Summoner's Rift. Here we are. J-Team over on the blue side versus Immortals on the red. A first showing for both of these squads since they have shuffled up their rosters. Absolutely. It'll be interesting to see how this one's going to play out. Loser of this match will have to play against the Vega Squadron. 
and the loser of that will be eliminated. That's absolutely true. Yeah, we're going to figure out which two teams are making the semifinals from this group today and which two teams are going home. We're going to play all of this group. This will be the last of the best of ones. Every match after this one should be a best of three, whether it sends you home or into the playoffs. Well, definitely going to be hoping that it's uh, the latter on that. Yeah. I would expect. Mm -hmm. Of course, we know Samsung is going to be a difficult opponent regardless, but... Maybe not if they play in the state that they played game one in. Yeah, well, it's interesting because thinking about Vega Squadron a little bit, and again, you're you're right that it didn't look great from Samsung. Okay, they pulled it out. Vega Squadron as a team was always a bit better early game and then kind of fell off. They just had kind of bad shot calling the mid to late, and that formula kind of continued. Yeah. But what I found kind of interesting, just in, in general watching League of Legends for the past two months, Worlds being a very sort of standout example, the, the whole gap is closing meme kind of played out. I, the reason being that early in mid game has probably been the closest it's been internationally in a very long time. Sure. Just in, in the general sense, you had, you know, G2, who had a very bad world showing, had like a 12,000 gold lead over Rocks Tigers in the group stage. And okay, Rocks weren't playing supremely well at that point in time, but like you had a lot of these teams who were able to have very compelling and good early to mid games even when they're the underdogs. And it feels like that part of League of Legends has gotten a lot closer. And if, even if you're a, a considered weaker team, but you're good at early to mid game, you can actually win early to mid game against top tier, even top tier Korean teams in general. And that, that feels like that's actually been kind of true as of uh, essentially almost all of 2016. MSI felt like it was kind of similar as well, where you had teams like Flash Wolves, 2 0 SKT during group stage, things like that. But um, it, it feels like you know, parts of the game are getting closer skilled together, that, that the individual laning prowess of people is getting much closer. For example, the previous game we just saw, uh, Lex went equal in farm to Ruler. And it's not like Ruler's like the best laning AD carry of all time, but it's like you've got the LCL runner-up against the World Championship runner-up and you went equal in lane. Yeah. Like, sorry, but that means you guys are pretty similarly skilled as far as laning phase is concerned. Yeah, it was it was a really strong performance overall from pretty much everybody on Vega. But, mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, you, you know, you hit that late game point, it comes down to the, all about the decision. Yep making and while they they had some really good you know plays like stopping that baron from being taken by samsung you know pushing them off still getting the the tier two tower in mid yeah. and really just transitioning things it's just you hit that point where you've taken most of the objectives on the map that mm -hmm. are outside of the base and then it becomes really difficult because you really have to be careful about where you go because you don't want to you know it, it hits that point where it's like if we all die the game is over yeah absolutely and that part of the game is still very, very hard. And Samsung deserved to win that game because they were the better team. Their their late game shot calling was clearly superior. But we are now into the game itself. Let's start talking about the things that are happening here. So of course, very normal lanes. Uh, interestingly enough, both junglers are starting top side jungle. I think this favors Dardox somewhat. Now, it's pretty easy to tell that, yes, both top laners leash, so it's pretty easy to track both these junglers. Graves doing the obvious path of blue into Gromp, and Rexai doing the obvious path of red buff into Krugs. But again, we're 623. He's going to get level 3 off those Krugs, and if Flame can get level 2, you see Morning already went down toward the top river. Yeah. He, is a, he is acutely aware of the fact that Dardoch could jump him very, very quickly, and Flame can say, hey, that got warded. He put his trinket down. Don't bother. Yeah, and that's going to be the only guaranteed CC, really, that Immortals has to set up uh, for Dardoch ganking in. Because the bot lane, you have the Cosmic Binding, but you have to land the shot. Yeah. So there's not a whole lot of guaranteed C uh, CC for Dardoch to really follow up on. Looks like he is going to go ahead, skip the Raptors, and head straight down the river towards this Scuttle Crab. Jay's roaming up. He's going to start throwing these plants out and get some vision. So Dardoch's just going to go ahead, peel off of that, yep. and move over to his own Grom. This is still not the best ward by Jay. Would have loved to see him get it over the wall onto the Gromp itself. I think the Hawkshot actually missed as well, so uh, Breaker learned Hawkshot at level 2, tried to find where Dardox was and couldn't quite spot him. Uh, but either way, it, it actually gives Dardox still a little bit of freedom, except that now Hachi's here to really try to be annoying about this one. Both will have smite at the same time. And the question is, yeah, with all the lane pushing going on, it's actually J Team able to reinforce with Jay. They can try to push back Ole. Smite fight's going to be close. I think it's going to still come down to a smite fight regardless. Well, it's drawing back into the brush, Dardoch. Nice. He will get Dardoch. it in the end, so nice little takeaway there. Ole just trying to support where he can, couldn't get those cosmic buttons in, but yeah. Dardoch, you know, known to be very good for his, his smiting and his aggression. He's able sure. to stick in there, and he gets that blue buff in the end, so it's going to be a, a nice keep for him. 
Uh, give him a level advantage, and overall, Achi uh, is just going to ultimately make him fall behind because he spent so much time in the enemy jungle there and doesn't yep. net anything for it. No, I absolutely agree. It's going to be a, a, a camp and a bit disadvantage for Achi here in the J-Team jungle. And honestly, Rek'Sai is one of those champions who are very good at securing their own buffs because of the damage up from E. And now Drada going for the mid lane gank, forcing the ghost out of Fofo. Yep, popping that one actually to go... On the aggressive against Bow Belter, didn't even see Dardock you know, before he had popped that, uh, but has that up so he can just jet his way out. So he'll be safe for now, but Summoner's Bell down, so we'll give a little bit of an edge to Bow Belter, but we can see Fofo is still pretty adequately winning these trades at the moment. It's only going to get harder as he gets those hex core upgrades. Yeah, Fofo's doing an amazing job here in this mid lane, honestly pushing down Bow Belter. Bow Belter does not have teleport, so if he can't get the lane in a good spot for when he recalls, he's going to lose an entire wave to Fofo shoving. Yeah. The victor having control is a huge deal. He wants that 1250 and change recall mark so that he can get himself the upgraded hex core and then something else. Bow Belter had to push in on the cannon wave which means it's going to be very easy for Povo to shove in the very next wave. He might even pull Aki to do it a bit faster, and it should. Either Pobelter gets the lane frozen on him and he loses the wave that way, or Povo hard pushes and Pobelter loses the wave the other way. Yeah, so going to be a rough spot, rough start there. And you can see Pole Builder coming back in. It's just going to be a double Dorans plus the Boots pickup for him, so not having enough to get you know, something like the Lost Chapter coming through for that Orianna. So it's going to be uh, a little bit harmful for him as we move forward and then back coming through from Fofo, and looks like he's actually just going to replicate that one, picking up the control ward as well. Yeah. So both of these guys going to be moving in a similar direction, but so far J-Team just going to be up by a couple hundred gold. You can see the Mortals bot lane, they're really getting pushed in and harassed out pretty yeah. heavily, and a 9 CS lead coming in for Breaker is not looking good for Cody Sun. No, it's really good. This is definitely well played by J-Team. Sure, they are advantaged in the matchup. They should be able to push in. They should be able to get the Taras down. And, you know, they're doing a very good job of that. Well played, you know, playing the lane the way it's supposed to be done. But some of that is the matchup on top of player skill doing well. I got to commend Pobelto for his, his play. Yes, he's very far behind in lane. He... He took the least bad option, which was shove and recall before the 1250 gold mark for Fofo. Force him to recall to match, but now a fight oh, the bot lane. Oh, coming down into the bot lane. They're going to get the root off that deadly flourish. Jay going low. Dardock really hungry for this first blood, nice but the heal. heal from Breaker is enough to keep the Zyra alive. And now Dardock has to back off as Achi did arrive running down the river. So no first blood going to be coming in yet. And that was both summoners burned out there by Ole. Four for two on summoners, though. It's but a very good gank, and it's a, it's a low escape bot lane. Jay team can't really hard push that wave anymore. They can no longer play the wash up the way they want to. Fofo just taking some damage. I don't think it's going to quite force the recall out. Yeah, not with that damage on the Pobolter there. Yeah, he's going to throw that Chaos Storm out, clear out the wave. Okay, it does. Won't no get much in a, under the Orianna, but yeah, he does have to back off. Low on mana, low on HP. Okay. Not a good spot to be in. I already used both of those recoilable potion charges as well. There's a the repeat gank. Yeah, Ole coming down. Doesn't have the flash to try to close the distance. Start off is does. there. But he's going to flash, get the double knockup, deadly flourish in on the breaker. Jay's going to go down. First kill, a double kill actually for Cody's son. Wasn't sure if he was going to get that off the grenade, but he does. And yep. that is going to be a nice start here for Immortals. 900 gold in the lead at the moment. And a really good way to just jumpstart that gin. Beautifully done. And J-Team actually pushed that wave up. You saw that there were still minions left from their wave, but there weren't any from Immortals. It's a Bard and a Rek'Sai. That is one of the easiest to bring in in your life against no flash, no escape bot lane. Disrespectful by J-Team. And hey, good job by Dardak making the repeat gank really quickly. Very well played by him to make that happen. Yeah, just beautiful flash knock up there. And then the cosmic fighting to follow. So yeah. you know all of the all of the CC that they needed to really solidify that one. And the fact that Cody Sun was able to get both of those kills is gonna be really strong for him because that he's coming huge. back into lane uh, with the boots of swiftness and that BF sword. So he's gonna be in a pretty good spot. Breaker as well has the BF sword, mm -hmm. but not gonna have that added mobility. So Cody is gonna be able to zip around a little bit, maybe dodge out those ash arrows as, as we move forward through this lane. You know, we're tracking Ole now, playing the Warden game. It's always very smart. As soon as you get your Sight Stone on support, roam around the map, get as many good deep wards as you can. Usually, it is a, it's an interesting timing because when both supports pick up Sight Stone, they're both picking up Red Trinket. And Red Trinket goes on a mandatory two-minute cooldown when you buy it. So essentially, the enemy support cannot sweep your wards for two minutes, and you run around, and any wards you put down are not going away. They have to pink ward them or control ward them as the state is right now. So uh, you, you kind of get that vision to stick for quite a while, and it lets you track your opponents. And, uh, you know, you saw kind of Ole get to do it first and put his deep wards in, and yep. it'll help track what's going on. You just saw a blue ping right there. It's J-Team saying, hey, this got warded, by the way. You've got to sweep that away. And you see Achi puts down the control ward to do that.
So there, there's the requirement. Has to put down that, that 75 gold board. Yep. Have to start being worried about that Infernal Drake if you're J-Team. Dardock, already getting to a pretty hefty spot. Has that Bombing Cinder coming in, getting ready to complete his Tracker's Knife with it. And, you know, soloing out that Dragon is not going to be something very difficult for this Rek'Sai. So, you see one ward sitting in the pit there for J-Team. They get one into the River Brush as well. So just going to try to maintain contested vision. Uh, of that area, but the blue buff handoff comes over to Pole Belter, so he's going to be in a, a pretty good spot. Just has an amp to him at the moment, hasn't been able to build into much, but now he's going to be able to match that push potential from Fofo, who went for really early uh, boots of lucidity. Well, it's just a bit unfortunate for Fofo. He's been actually, even though he was winning in farm, and he still is, Pole Belter is sort of on sort of a theoretical level, played the matchup better in that, again, he forced Fofo on a matched recall before 1250 gold. He traded the Shockwave to force Fofo back again, and of course he has to spend money once again. And so Fofo's still sitting here without upgrading his E, and he no longer has the Wave Clear power. Very, very rarely will you ever have a 10 minute victor without a Mark 1 hex core or a Mark 2 hex core. So, uh, you know, really actually pretty rough stuff for Fofo. He no longer has the Wave Clear that he's supposed to have this stage of the game. And I mean, how many games has he really played where he's been denied the access to that kind of good Wave Clear? Yeah, probably not, a, probably not too many. Being in that spot there is never good when you have to go for the Lucidity Boots before you get one Hex Core upgrade. Yeah. So it's a little bit rough. Achi clearing out those Krugs doesn't finish some of those tiny ones. Yeah, he's trying to hug the bot lane because he knows Flash is still down for a few more seconds from most of his bot lane. And he was like, if Dardock tries to repeat gank one more time because he lost track of him, I want to be close to the match. Flash is back up now, so you know that, that crisis has been somewhat averted. But now maybe they can find themselves the lane gank. Yeah, does he want to stick around is the question. The Tempered yeah. Fate is there for Ole now as he is level 7. So he could always just throw that out, stop the gank in its tracks. You see Opti is having some hesitation as far as recalling goes. That word's going to come out. Oh, that's going to be the Astro in. Ole taking a huge burst of damage. Flashes oh, away. You're gets gonna get knocked him. up by the Spiritual Beautiful. Thorns. And Breaker flashes forward to get the final auto attack. Will put one on the board for J-Team. Nice kill coming Ooh, through, but now the curtain this. calls opened up. Jay, Rex coming. Yeah, the healthiest member is going to have to block all these shots. Achi takes the last one. Dardock coming in. The Prey Seeker not going to hit. Obelter is roaming in. Do they want to dive this one? The answer yes, is yes. Do. Big Shockwave comes in. Only going to find Breaker. Gets rooted down by that deadly flourish, and Pobelter is able to finish him off with the command dissonance. So that is still going to be a kill picked up for Immortals. One for one trade. Wow, what a huge deal that Pobelter was actually unlocked to roam around the lane. Only just now does Fofo finally have the upgraded augment. And honestly, so much was cool here. That bait was sick. He puts the Morgan to make all a auto attack instead of go for the arrow. He saw him sweep it and said, I can bait him into auto wing. That setup was absolutely amazing. Breaker didn't have to flash. He was actually already winding up the auto attack, so a small misplay there. But either way, it wasn't him who died. It was sadly his support who got chunked out. And we see in the back half of that, Fofo once again pushed out by Pobalter. Yeah, Dardock is well there for a little bit of a gank, but they're not able to get the kill. You know, Pole Bolter had to expand uh, pretty much everything in that bottom lane to get the kill onto Breaker, the Flash, uh, and Ghost, as well as the Shockwave used. But now, uh, you know, as mentioned, Dardock going for this Dragon. Could solo this out, looks like it's going to be uh, a little bit of help coming through from Ole, however. Jay runs over, does ward this, but the likelihood of a steal really is well. just uh, so slim. And there it is, Dardock. He's got the smite on point. Looks like we're actually going to get two Infernal Drakes in a row. All right, and Infernal Drake is definitely one of the best ones to have once you've got a gold lead. It basically just cements your stat advantage. Seems to be sort of the reason why it's been so good. Uh, so going to be a really nice thing here for Immortals. Absolutely, tons of stats for these guys. Achi making the best play he can, which is trying to steal away the red buff, knowing that Dardock was on the bot side of the map. Dardock making a beeline there, and it's going to be tight. But, yep, <laughs> throws the Prey Seeker just oh, no, reflexively. Achi could actually fight for this. Oh, but he's just going to take the Blasting Cone out. Yeah. Uh, he actually has one charge on his on his item as well. Honestly, he could have warded that, that buff, warded that brush, and and basically called Dardock's bluff and said, you don't have to use my charge if you use one on Dragon. And he would have gotten to take it away. So, um, unfortunately, Achi was a little bit gun-shy there, but, hey, it's it's the safer choice to make sure you don't get killed up by Pobolter's roaming. I can't say it's objectively wrong, but he would have it would have paid off if you played more riskily. Yeah, the net loss is really just gonna be his time spent and you know that's the second time that that's really happened for him going right. for these buffs. So he's just falling further and further behind. Now twenty CS up uh, for Dardock and he's just in a really good spot. Has that additional Assist, but that's going to be yeah, the tempered fate used onto Breaker, causing Fighting to slow him up. And the curtain calls opened up. Dardock, meanwhile, is kill. just going to be 1v1ing Jay in the river. <laughs> Flame TPing down for bot lane. Says, you know what? I haven't been doing a whole lot of anything, guys. Let me get a kill. So it looks like they're going to try to hand this one off. There it is. 
Hits him with a heroic charge. Yep. And three kills picked up as Bull Belter Solo is able Fofo. to get Fofo. So it looks like we might yep. have a replay on that as one. As soon but. as Jay leaves the lane, the draw dot come on down for this one. And just every single shot from Cody Sun lands here. So we watch Bull Belter just land the shock wave. Yeah. Yep. And it's just too much damage from the deal with. And then Hopefully you just run him there. down. Yep. <laughs> That's gold leads for you. You just do that much damage sometimes. All right. Well, solid pickups here for Immortals. Really moving forward to this game. And it's going to be first brick gold going over as well as they finish out that tier two. And now look at that. Achi also died. So maybe we'll get a replay of his death. Oh, geez. Yeah, I missed that one entirely. <laughs> but this is immediately evaporating right now for J Team. Achi getting outmatched by Dardock, absolutely out farmed, out ganked, out controlled, out everything. And the mid lane as well, but Walter doing a good job with the matchup. Now Dardock's gotta win this fight. And this. there's the smite. Yeah, smite and tunnels tunnel. out. Alright, that wasn't exactly too hard. I made it more exciting <laughs> than it should have been. It's a support Syra. I wonder if you can help smite him. Oh he did. <sighs> Got away with murder, but alright, so we'll take a look at this. So Achi uh -oh. just uh, he was just trying to clear the wave, man. Come on, Dardock. Still really well played. The flash and a knockup. The EW from Pobalter is actually the right combo to go for. Uh, of course, Pobalter knows this. He's, you know, 18 times the, the Orianna I am. But for those out there who uh, just realize that basically Q's range is the shortest range of all of Orianna's abilities. And if you instead just shield W, you can get guaranteed damage up with no skill shots required as long as your tank is engaging for you. You can Q afterwards if you need to. So smart by Pobalter to do the right abilities. And for any of you watching at home, when you've got a Rek'Sai flash gun of people, EW is the right opening combo. Who would have thought? Poe Belter is pretty good at League of Legends. Shocking that. <laughs> <laughs> Never would have expected that one, but oh, looks like Morning is going to get a, a chunk of the action. That's yeah. Journey coming through. He has to throw up the Maelstrom to try to keep himself alive. I don't know if they can get the catch. Dardock doesn't have the flash, but oh, oh there we go. That's going to be the tempered fate. Poe Belter is here for good measure. He's going to dash forward. He gets a good chunk of yeah. damage in onto that Orianna, but in the end, he does go down. It's another kill on the board now for Bow Belter. Four and zero. Eight and one overall. As the Mortals are really starting to run away with this game. Four thousand gold in the lead. Look how tanky Flame is. Immortals are going for the, the pretty standard mid-game lane swap. If your bot lane kills the turret, swap your bot lane to the top lane and go for the top lane one as well. And then ask how good is your top lane holding the 1v3. Achi, smart to come down to the bottom lane. Now, ultimately, it's still Immortals just trading turrets back and forth. They're actually a bit slower on the trade overall, it looks like. Uh, not going to be a huge problem. They're going to get it back regardless. But you kind of yeah. saw Flame able to withstand a lot of that punishment. And now, oh, once again, Bo oh, oh. good go. flash. Yeah, just styling on him. Tries to go in for the kill, but Fofo just can't get it. Popolt are going to flash out of that Chaos Storm, goes into his face, and takes him out yet again. Oof. I mean, more than 50% of the kills on his team at the moment. Yeah, he's doing massively 5 0 0 is a beautiful scoreline. The one returning member of Immortals, Popolter. It, it's great because uh, one of the great stats I liked from North American LCS last split was. Every top laner, or sorry, every mid laner in the North American LCS was Korean, Danish, or Poe Belter. And uh, Poe Belter continuing to be excellent, the essentially true, true. I don't want to say true American. That, fe that feels wrong to say. Like, I don't, I don't mean it that way. But uh, you know, the, the I believe American born. I'm pretty certain he is uh, American born mid laner doing very well for himself. And yeah, honestly, crushing. And uh, in what could otherwise be a very close game, yeah, he's his actual contributions were really big here. Yeah, this is this is a performance uh, on Orianna that Toys would be proud of if Toys had remained yeah. with TPA <laughs> <laughs> and then turned into J Team. Yep. Now, Hong Kong Esports for him, but you had the jersey earlier. Yep. And he threw it down because uh, that time is over for Ole. That's true. Actually, I wonder what's happening with that team. I haven't really followed up uh, on mu much of the LMS happenings this season. Yeah, me either. So I'll, I'll definitely have to check that out before this, the split starts, but. Maybe there's some interesting roster shuffles going on. I know Flash Wolves are pretty just all sticking together, so. Mm -hmm. yeah, which is always nice to see. I think CLG, this similar in, in TSM, or they get an old player back. So, you know, a lot of these teams sticking together. And I always yeah. like that. Um, roster moves are always exciting and interesting. They're always very fun to look at and be a part of. But I always appreciate teams that stick together year over year. Sure. That's why, you know, I was really excited uh, for Samsung, uh, you know, coming into this. But still just a little bit shaky. But I have a... Uh, the utmost confidence that they will get themselves together before the split starts. Maybe even before the end of this day. Yeah. Well, they're waiting in the winner's match for what looks to be Immortals, which I believe would be the next match. 
I believe it's uh, winners then losers then decider. Yes, I think you are correct. Yeah, because I am I am casting the match after next, which is losers with the fishy. Okay, so. and I'm casting the match that is next with Papa's with you. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, keep it rolling. Oh, Oleg, yeah, going really aggressive. Throws down that tempered fate onto himself. He gets a live Dardock wrapped around the back. Oleg might go down for this, but no, the Ooh. shield is there for Pobo to keep him alive. Dardock gonna get exhausted in the front lines. Goes back in, but he's gonna get locked up and taken down. Popo able to finish him off, so just playing off a little bit more than they could chew. There's a little bit of a scattered engage there, Ole going in by himself, Dardock not immediately able, able to follow up, and they get punished for it. So the second kill for J-Team on the board, but still, uh, they got a ways to go before yeah. they are in range of you know, winning this match. Absolutely agree. So, yeah, four and a half thousand gold deficit. Definitely not insurmountable. I mean, it's big, but not so insane that you couldn't make the comeback. But here we go. We watched the over aggressive dive from Ole, and really, I don't think they had a lot of visits going for this fight. Pobolter isn't even here yet. He's pretty much just going to match uh, when Fofo shows up. Like, I don't know. This felt a little bit too greedy. Good defense by J Team overall, but the thing is, the Immortals are the winning team. They're the one who gets to set the pace, who get to choose almost all of the fights. They chose a bad fight, and I think that was a pretty big mistake. Yeah. Yeah, definitely uh, really over aggressive from them. And I, I kind of wish we, it was kind of just off camera, but Dardoch, uh, instead of walking straight down to Breaker, who is locked up by that Tempered Fate, walked in toward uh, Achi and Morning, mm. around the Krugs, towards the Tier 2 Tower. And I think that if he had maybe just done a beeline straight for the Ash, maybe they would have been able to get that kill yeah uh, and you know maybe that fight could have gone a little bit differently but didn't really get to see what caught his eye and what drove him uh, the other way around yeah they definitely would have a decent chance of it I mean it's it's a cool comp what they're going for it's a fair bit of long-range engage you know like Bard and Rexai are both good at getting in on their targets and of course Jin can snipe from afar so you know the, the right play for them to make is things like this just not so correctly that they get their support caught out for doing it uh, either way, though, the Immortals clearly in the driver's seat here. Double Infernal Drake, definitely nice to have. The gold lead still staying up that you know, roughly 5,000 mark. So would require a lot for J Team to get through this, but they've got their own pick potential, right? You've got lockdown, hard lockdown from four of the five members of the team. Plenty of damage up from four of the five members of the team as well. So one good Asher or one good Zyra bind, things like that. A one good TP flank from Morning, or even just a flash engage. You can pick people off, and Immortals must be respectful with a very few escape tools on their team. Yeah. Morning still does have to be careful though, doesn't have any MR aside for the Mercury boots. So he will absolutely get shredded by Bobo. Speaking of getting shredded, uh, that's going to be Breaker going down. Dies before the bullet can even connect from the chin. Bobo's and now next. Bobo, oh boy. Gets locked up by the Tempered Fate, straight into the Cosmic Binding. Ole just chaining it together beautifully. Wow. And Achi will fall as well. Full Belter picking that up. So three kills just like that. They have a botched engage. Immortals is like, ah, let's make up for that one. Yep. Uh, that was uh, a little bit of a. A bad look by them, but uh, they may come for it in the end, get three kills, and now are looking for that Baron. And you can see the remaining members of JT, Morning and Jay, not even going to bother walking over towards that Baron pit. No, this is some good stuff right there. There we go. Baron goes down. Really good call overall as well. Like, So we got to watch this fight again, and it, it's so great. Prey Seeker into Deadly Flourish. Is just uh, Squishies are guaranteed to die when that happens, and that one slow is enough for the, the bind. And yeah, this is just perfect play by Ole. Right, perfect timing on the binding right there. That's a kill pickup. And then Flame practically solos Achi. Only now does Bowalter come to help and essentially steals the kill away. Really, really nice flank by Flame to find the switch target in the back line. And yep, with three dead, the instant call to go for Baron. No one was confused about what that call was. It was the right one to go for. Immortals, very clean in that whole thing. Yeah. And they're looking good. I mean, you know, we, we, we talked so much while we were getting ready to get into the game, like how is the synergy going to be on the squad? And it seems like it's working out really well. Flame coming in with these, you know, these teleports and these flank plays. It's been on point and he knows exactly which, uh, you know, targets he has to go for. Uh, and just the, the CC chaining in general has been really strong uh, from the set of Immortals. Dardock going to go back in for the engaged. Kurt the opened arrow. up, but there's the arrow to interrupt Cody Sun, who is now really far away from Ooh. the fight. But there's a huge shockwave completely going to melt out Achi. Take him out of the fight morning. Has to flash away again, taking so much damage from that Oriana, not having MR. And Breaker almost goes down. The Prey Seeker wouldn't be enough to finish him off, but he still has to go back to the fountain. There's no wave clear that can get rid of these Baron Empowered minions. So that's a tier two tower going down in favor of Immortals. Meanwhile, Flame, he's just taking the bottom one all by himself. Yeah, and it just doesn't matter. There's really nothing that J-Team can do about this. Immortals with the Baron buff splitting up the 4-1 is actually really appropriate and really smart when you've already killed the jungler off. 44 mid lane is easy, and you let Flame get your team one extra turret just to make sure it all 
lines up conveniently. Only one minute left in the next break. That'll be another pickup once they reset on the map. And yeah, it seems like Immortals, with their ultimates down, have nothing else to do but reset. And so, really nicely, they, they kind of greedily but intelligently so take away as much of the jungle as they can to kill off some wards. And actually, ooh, good yes. job by Jay getting those wards back down yeah. because that could have been a very easy sort of assassination flank attempt if those wards weren't there. Yeah, because they still have the Tempered Fate, didn't have to use that in the last engage. And we saw that one out, Flame. Gonna be a very tanky poppy up on that front line. Not gonna take a whole lot of damage. They are able to find Fofo, open up with a curtain call. Chris Verdict will eject Morning. As they try to zone them away from this turret, down to half HP, a couple more hits. We'll burn that one through, but they can't push up. Cody Sun gets taken low, Pole Belter at about half HP. And Immortals will say, okay, you know what? We don't want to overstay. Yeah. We don't want to get ace. They'll go ahead, peel back, likely get ready for that dragon that's about to spawn. It actually felt like that shot call was a bit of an overstay, though. You know all of J-Team had just respawned. You knew Achi was back. And, and J-Team were in their own base. They had full health and mana bars. I don't know. I honestly didn't like the fact that Immortals were going for that bot lane inhibitor turret push because uh, even the engage they went for with Tempered Fate didn't really look all that special either. Either way, they, of course, they are not punished. No kills did get to come through for J-Team. And... Either way, they're able to reset, keep the map control, and get this mountain break regardless. So, so no punish for what was maybe a very minor misplay, if it even is one. But regardless, Immortals are back on the map, back with control. Flame does have teleport, so of course it's time for the 4 ones click quick yet again. Put the stronger Vizier team near the easy-to-kill inhibitor turret that's very, very low. Let Flame collect all the minions and pressure that top lane tier 2. Very sort of by-the-book smart shot calling. It's just just generally intelligent, and here they are for the push. Yeah, and Jay's team, they're just not fast enough to get down here. They had Fofo and Anji up in the top side of the jungle, and I mean, Fofo has to be there for the wave player, so they can't clear out these what were then Baron-empowered minions. Now the Baron buff has expired. Inhibitor almost going down a couple more shots, but this just gives Flame more time to knock down that final tier 2 tower and top. So Immortals, they're just winning on all fronts, and that's yep. something drastic happens in this bottom lane in favor of J-Team. Immortals are pretty much just slated to win this game in the next couple minutes. Yeah, they can just kind of ride the game out and play it sort of by the book, and they should be able to close it out. Here yeah, comes the play. Is. Arrow's going to land a pull with a great target for that one. Yeah, that's gonna the first coming down. In. He is going to fall. Zyra finds the killing blow on the end of that one, but Curse Call not doing a whole lot to Fofo. Works it down to about 60%. And Immortals, they lose Bow Belter, and that's going to stop their pushing power for the most part. That's the kind of thing that J-Team needed. Sadly for them, there's no neutral objectives up to take. There's no Dragon, of course, it's already gone. Baron's still about three minutes away from respawning. So sadly, the reward for killing the opposing mid laner was losing top lane tier two. J-Team, uh, they, they need to be daring right now and take as much of the map back as they can. And yet here's Cody Sun, able just to grab his grab the opposing red buff and then steal through the bot lane wave. It's I mean, this is the power of minion waves right here. J-Team can't even leave their base because the mid and hip already going down before that they kill the 7-0 and zero Orianna and still lose the map. Yeah, I mean, it's a huge burst of shutdown will come through, but it goes on to your support player, which is not where you want that allocated at all. If that had yeah. gone over to Breaker, would have helped him out a lot, because right now he's a one-item Ash, only has the zeal and two daggers uh, yeah. in the inventory as he works towards that Hurricane. And, I mean, you're looking at, you know, a three-item mid laner, a two-item, almost three-item uh, AD carry, and it's just the gold is not there, and having that go over to Jay is just almost more harmful for a Jay team. Yeah, and he's not going Sork Truce as well, so it's just it's even less damage than he would be getting out otherwise with a different build. So, uh, yeah, took the 300 gold kill credit, unlucky there. At least the, the shutdown is shared. That's a nice change, so everyone gets to partake in that one as of, you know, Season 5. But, yeah, 12,000 gold lead. Immortal is still heavily in the driver's seat. And, you know, they just have to close the game out in the next two minutes or so. I think they're, they're very likely to. In the meantime, J-Team gets to continue to absorb minions. And the, the pleasant silver lining for the inhibitor going down is there's more minions to kill. And they tend to kill your own minion waves. So there's less gold going into the mortal's pockets. But we're likely to see the attempt at a game-winning push with a five-man top lane. You're seeing flame roam up right now. And this is the play that Immortal's going to try to take to win the game. Yeah, recall coming through still from morning. He'll have... Speed up here, the home guards, as he zips his way back in. But Immortals already set up. The gravity field's been used. At least burned through the wave, so Immortals has to stick around and wait for that next one to roam in. But the Super Creeps are coming down into that bottom lane, getting ready to crash into the base. It as well, so this is do-or-die time for J-Team. Kind of have to go for 
you know, the Hail Mary if right. they want to win this. There's two time bombs. One is the double minion waves coming in from mid and bot. The other is a 30 second respawn on Baron Nasher. As long as the mortals don't play too stupidly and don't push too hard and dive the turret when they don't need to, although they're going to hoping them to play. Oh, well, Nardok goes in. That's going to be the Timber Fate keeping him safe for now. Breaker taking these shots from the Jin, getting in the last one. No Bobo is able to block it, but here's the flame. flame from the sidelines, taking out the Ash. Achi dashing away, doing his damnedest to stay alive. This is he will be able to, but that's the last turret going down in front of these inhibitors. And now the mid gonna re fall again as well as top three inhibitors will be down for J Team. And without their ADC, this is looking like Immortals possibly winning the game before the 30 minute mark. Looks like it 14 to 3. The kills make oh, that 15 yeah. on to the next. Achi go. gonna get melted. Morning. Following suit, J and Bobo desperately trying to run back to the fountain. Looks like they will be able to make it, but not to much avail. They can't do anything to stop Immortals from knocking down these Nexus turrets and from knocking down the Nexus itself. That's going to be game two going over to Immortals. They All will right. go ahead and they'll have to face off against Samsung in our winner's match later on. But coming up next, it will be J Team versus Vega Squadron. Oh, lost loser matches next. OK. I believe uh, so. OK. Uh, either way, it's going to be best of threes now for the rest of the day. We're going to decide who goes home, I can who makes that. the playoffs, and then also decide afterwards. Yeah, uh, the schedule